In this chapter, we're going to look at the experimental techniques that are being used in science, in particular chemistry. In science and in chemistry, there are certain things that we commonly measure and we call them physical quantities. And there are four physical quantities that we uh, measure very often. The first one being mass, next time, temperature, and lastly volume. Right, so these are the four quantities that we commonly measure. So uh, the first part of this chapter, we need to look at what are the instruments or what are the apparatus that we can use in the lab to measure them. For the first three physical quantities, I believe you should already know by now the apparatus that are being used to measure them. Uh, for mass, a common mistake that students would make is to say that we use a weighing scale. Now, a weighing scale is to find out the weight of a person. All right? For in science, when we need to find out the mass of a solid or substance, we use an electronic balance or a mass balance. For time, I'm sure you would have used it before. We use a stopwatch. And temperature, we use a thermometer. The thermometer can be a digital thermometer or it can be a mercury thermometer or it can be an alcohol thermometer. Right? Um, mercury thermometers are no longer available in Singapore. Reason being mercury is a highly toxic substance. Next, for volume, that is where it gets slightly more complicated because for volume, we can be measuring the volume of a gas or we can be measuring the volume of a liquid. To measure the volume of a gas, we use something called a gas fringe. And to measure the volume of liquids, there are different apparatus that we can use. We can either use a measuring cylinder We can use something called a pipette or a burette. Now, I know some of these terms may be foreign to you, um, but don't worry, we will explain what a pipette is and what a burette is in the next few slides. Now, other than the apparatus um, needed to measure the physical quantities, we also need to know the units in which we can measure them by. Uh, for those of you who are taking physics, you may have learned something called SI units or standard index units. Now, in the study of chemistry, we are not too concerned with SI units, but rather we um, are more concerned with the common units that are being used or common units that these quantities are being measured in. For example, for mass, if we look at the amount of solid that we usually weigh out is in terms of grams. For time, we measure it in terms of either minutes or seconds. Temperature, degrees Celsius. And then volume would be centimeter cubed. Okay, for volumes, we are sticking with the uh, British convention of using centimeter cubed. Uh, but essentially, centimeter cubed is the same as milliliters. So one centimeter cube is equal to one ml. So as mentioned in the last slide, there are four physical quantities that we usually measure. Um, one way to remember them is MTV, M, T, and V, or music videos. Um, so what do we need to know about them is that we need to know the apparatus needed to measure each physical quantity and also the common units by which we measure them by. Okay, so at this point, I will introduce one more instrument or one more apparatus that we can use to measure these quantities. And this instrument is what I would call a special weapon. And the special weapon is a data logger. So what is a data logger? As the name suggests, it is simply an electronic device that logs data that records data okay it's a device that records data so on its own 
it is pretty useless because it can only record data. In order to use it meaningfully, it needs to be connected to what we call a sensor. Alright, so what sensor do we want to use? It depends on what quantity do you want to measure. If you want to measure temperature of a substance, for example, then we have to use either temperature sensor or heat sensor. Okay, if we want to measure, for example, the pressure um, of gas in a container, then we have to use a pressure sensor. Or if we want to measure the pH of a solution, then we have to use a pH sensor. Okay, so why is this a special weapon? Because um, using a data logger combined with a sensor, we can achieve certain things that we cannot um, achieve using the traditional apparatus. First thing is this. For example, if we are using a temperature sensor to measure temperature of a solution, it's usually more accurate than if we were to use a, uh, an alcohol thermometer or sometimes even a digital thermometer so we can get more accurate readings. Secondly, we can use, we can record two or more quantities simultaneously. Alright, what do I mean by that? For example, if I put a temperature sensor in a solution, I can also start um, the timing in the data logger. So what will happen is that it will record the temperature of the solution against time. How the temperature of the solution changes with time. Also, if we uh, certain data loggers will allow you to connect more than one sensor, so we can monitor the temperature and pressure and pH all at the same time. So now that we have looked at what are the apparatus available for us to measure the different physical quantities, the next part will look at how to use these apparatus. For the measurement of mass, we use an electronic balance. So this is how an electronic balance roughly looks like. So how do we measure is that we, for example, we put the, a certain amount of solid on the electronic balance and it will display a number, for example, 2.7 G. All right, so what it means is that we, the mass of the substance that we are weighing is 2.7 grams. Now one button to look out for in the uh, electronic balance is this. Sometimes the, the button can be known as tear, T-A-R-E, or sometimes it can be known as zero. Essentially it means the same thing. It means to um, zero the balance. So for example, for some balances, um, even without anything on it, it's dis it will display a non-zero value. So how do you make it zero? You can press the tear button or the zero button. Now this button is very uh, powerful as well because for example, in this case, um, the container, the mass of the container actually adds to the total mass um, that's being measured. So what if I only want to measure out 2.7 grams of the solid? What I would do is that I'll put the container on the mass balance and I press the zero button to return it to zero and then I will add the solid until the value reaches 2.7. So because I've pressed the zero button with the container on the balance, the 2.7 measured will be entirely of the solid itself. To measure time, we use a stopwatch and I'm very sure many if not all of you would have used a stopwatch at a point in your life. So what is reflected in this stopwatch is that it has a timing of 1 minute and 20 seconds. In chemistry, we are not too concerned with milliseconds. So most of the timings that we record are to the nearest second. Okay, reason being um, due to human reaction time, there's no way for us to measure so accurately um, as to the milliseconds um, level. So to correct for human error, human uh, reaction time, we would round 
and the timing to the nearest second. To measure temperature, we use a thermometer. And if you were to zoom into a section of the thermometer, this is what you will see. The important thing to take note is that each small division is actually 1 degree Celsius. So what happens if the temperature level is between two small divisions? For example, in this case, it is between 26 and 27. Then we can only write it down as it is 26.5. Okay, so a thermometer can allow you to measure to 1 dp, but that decimal place can only be 0 or 5, no other numbers. So now we'll look at the measurement of volumes. As mentioned, for the measurement of volume of a gas, we use a gas range. Um, this is an example of a gas range. So um, based on the reading shown on the gas range, we know the volume of gas that's being collected in the syringe. For example, in this case, it reflects a volume of 14 centimeter cube. Now the calibration or the divisions in a gas, gas range may vary. So it's important for you to look at uh, the gas range that you are using and see what is the um, value of the smallest division and so that you can make the correct measurement. In this case, each smallest measurement or uh, division represents a volume of 2 cm3. That's why the reading shows 14 cm3. Before we go on and look at the apparatus used to measure the volume of liquids, there's something, there's a phenomenon that we have to learn first. When we put water, when we add water to a very narrow container, we will find that the top of the water uh, is not flat, but rather um, it's curved and it's actually curved inwards. So we call that a meniscus. In particular, we call that a concave meniscus. This is the case for water. For some other liquids, for example, mercury, you will find that the curve, it actually curves upwards. We call this a convex meniscus. So if the water level is not flat, how then do we take a measurement for concave meniscus? for liquids that will give a concave meniscus which is almost all the liquids that we will encounter in O levels we read the bottom of the meniscus for liquids that give a convex meniscus we will read the top of the meniscus all right so the rule of thumb is if it curves inwards if it curves down we read the bottom if it curves up we read the top So the first instrument that we can use to measure volume of liquids is a measuring cylinder. Now using it is very simple. We just have to add the liquid and add it to the correct volume or the desired volume. Okay, if you zoom in to a measuring cylinder, this is what you will see. The smallest division of a measuring cylinder is one centimeter cubed. So for example, if we need to measure 23 centimeter cube of a liquid, then we have to add the liquid until it reaches this level. So once it reaches that level, we know that we have measured out 23 centimeter cube of a liquid. The next instrument that we can use to measure volume of a liquid is known as a pipette. So a pipette looks something like this. There are two parts of a pipette that you need to pay special attention to. Firstly is on all pipettes at the bulb area, at the middle section, there's a number on it. For example, 25. So what does this number tell you? The number tells you um, that the pipette can only be used to measure this volume this volume of solution or this volume of liquid. For example, if you see a number of 25, it simply means that this pipette can only be used to measure 25 centimeter cube of a liquid. The second part that you need, uh, the second important part about a pipette is here. At the top of the pipette, you should see a very faint line. 
Okay, so what does this fin line tell you is that when you suck the solution up, all right, so when you fill the entire pipette with solution until it reaches this line. So if I were to zoom in, so this is the fin line I'm talking about. When the solution reaches this level, it means that the amount, the volume of liquid in this pipette is 25 centimeter cube. All right. So um, as we learn how to use a pipette, you would have noticed that pipettes can only be used to measure fixed volumes of solution. And the fixed volume that it can measure is reflected on the pipette itself. For example, 25. Okay. The next thing is that how do we then suck the solution up? We use something called a pipette filler. So a pipette filler looks something like this. All right, you will get to use it in the lab by pressing a certain button over here. Um, we can actually suck the solution out the pipette. So don't worry, you will get a chance to use it in the lab. The last instrument that we can use to measure volumes of liquid would be a burette. So a burette looks something like this. Um, a burette has a tap at the bottom. So when we open the tap, the liquid will flow out. When we close the tap, the flow of the liquid will stop. Now at the top of the burette, it has a reading of 0. At the bottom of the burette, it has a reading of 50. So what this tells us is that the maximum volume of liquid that we can measure out using a burette is 50 centimeter cube. Now how do we use a burette then? Is that we will, before using a burette, Typically, we will fill, it, fill up the burette until um, it's completely filled, so at a level of zero. Okay, so before measuring out any volumes, you will fill up the burette completely up to zero. And then, for example, say we want to measure out 19.2 centimeter cube of a solution. What we will do is that we'll put a container, let's say a beaker, at the um, below the tap, we will turn on the tap, we will open the tap, and we will let the liquid level flow until it reaches 19.2. All right. So if we were to zoom in to a section of the burette, you will find that a burette is highly accurate. Why? Because the smallest division is 0 0.1 centimeter cube. That will allow us to measure volumes up to a decimal point, for example, 19.2. The next very interesting thing that you'll find about a burette is that the numbers seem to run in a non-logical way. For example, in a measuring cylinder, if we were to look at a measuring cylinder, as we go up, the measuring cylinder as we move up the numbers get bigger but for a burette as we go down the numbers get bigger all right so why why is that so is because of how the burette is being constructed remember to measure out the volume we have to fill up the zero first and then we open the tap for the liquid to flow down Alright, so as the liquid level flows down, it tells us that we are collecting more and more of the solution in the beaker. That is why as you go down, the number gets bigger. So in the zoom in um, view of the burette, 19.2 would be over here. This is 19.2. The common mistake that students make is to say that 19.2 is over here. That's not correct. All right. Remember, for a burette, the numbers as we move down the burette, the number increases. For a measuring cylinder, as we go up the measuring cylinder, the number increases. So it's opposite. Now that we have looked at how to use a measuring cylinder, a pipette, and a burette, the last thing to learn is which to use for what situation. So we have seen that a measuring cylinder is not very accurate. 
right? The smallest division is one centimeter cube. So we can only use it to measure accurately a whole number of volume. Meaning, for example, 41 centimeter cube or 38 centimeter cube. All right, notice that there's no decimal point, it is a whole number. Okay, pipettes and burettes, they offer rather accurate measurements of volumes. However, pipette has a limitation. Pipette can only measure a fixed volume. Right, how do we know what volume that particular pipette can measure is reflected in the middle section of the pipette? In most cases, it measures a volume of 25 centimeter cube. Right. Sometimes for certain pipettes, it can measure volumes in multiples of 5 as well. Okay, meaning there are some pipettes that can measure um, accurately a volume of 5.0 cm3 or 10.0 cm3 or 15.0 cm3. Lastly, for a burette, burette is the most accurate. All right. So burette will allow us to measure volumes that has accurate to 1 dp. All right. So whenever you see a decimal point, it's not zero. Or whenever you need something accurate as to 1 dp, uh, you have to use a burette. For example, we can measure 25.10 centimeter cube. Okay, point 0.1, all right, or 36.5 centimeter cube. So whenever you see that um, we need to measure volume accurate to 1 dp, um, meaning there is uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, then we have to use a burette. Let us now practice what we have just learned. Uh, to decide what is the best apparatus to use for measuring the following um, physical quantities. In this case, they are all volumes. So in the first case, we need to measure 40 cm3 of water. All right. By 40 cm3, do we need a very accurate measurement of volume? Answer is no. It is a whole number. So in this case, we can use a measuring cylinder. In the second, um, in the second part, we need to measure twenty-five centimeter cube of oxygen. Now, if you are not careful here, you might think that um, twenty-five is a whole number. We don't have to measure very accurately, so we need we can use a measuring cylinder. But um, please note that oxygen is a gas, so to measure volume of a gas, we use a gas syringe. In the third part, we need to measure 15.2 cm3 of hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid or all other acids, they are essentially dissolved in water. So they are solutions, they are liquids. And we need to measure accurately 0.2. So the only apparatus can, that can allow you to measure point something of volume is a burette. And lastly, we need to measure 25.0 uh, centimeter cube of so sodium chloride solution. So in this case, um, 25 is a very um, familiar number. So if you see 25.0, we can actually use a pipette. Now the, que the next question would be, can we use a burette to measure 25 centimeter cube of sodium chloride solution? The answer would be yes, we can also use a burette to measure accurately.